So what is a hydrosol? Today, we're gonna to be learning how to make two different kinds. One of them is for drinking, and the other one is a room or air freshener. And if you're interested in learning how to make them at home, then this is the video for you. No, that sounded really talky. <laughs> So hydrosols are often like a byproduct from making essential oils. So when you're uh, making essential oils, you get water that comes off from the process and you can collect that and it will have all of the properties of the herbs in, in a very pure distillate form. So we can make hydrosols just for themselves. Usually we would use a still, but it's very easy to recreate this at home with some pretty basic equipment. And they have loads of different properties. So uh, we can use them as like an alcohol-free spirit alternative, which is one of the things that I've been experimenting with them for. Uh, they've also got loads of household uses. So you can make cleaning products, surface cleaner, air fresheners, linen sprays, that kind of thing. And they also have lots of great medicinal products as well. They're very gentle, so they're good for pets and for children. So yeah, loads of different uses, really fun to make at home as well. And yeah, it'd be great to show you how to make them. The first recipe that I'm making is an experiment. I've not made this one before, but I'm making some cocktails for a friend's wedding. And I want to make some alcohol-free sort of like spirit alternatives. And hydrosols are a really good option for that. So you can make a kind of really pure distilled sort of herbal flavored water that will be really yummy. So this one is one that I'm making yeah, for the wedding, it's a bit of a love potion. So we've got all different ingredients that are part of the rose family. So it's gonna be a rose hydrosol, it's gonna be the main ingredient. And I've also got some foraged hawthorn and then some apple. And all of these are part of the same family and hopefully are gonna make a really yummy, delicious cocktail. So once you've got your ingredients, setting up your still, super straightforward. And normally they're made in like a really big fancy still, but if you don't have one of those, you can MacGyver one with stuff that is probably just sat in your kitchen. The first thing you need is a big pot with preferably a glass lid, because then you can see what's happening in your potion. You need something to prop your bowl up on. I have got a handy goo pot. They are super useful for everything. And you need oh, a, bowl, a bowl to collect your uh, distillate in. So the distillate is like the water that comes out from uh, boiling the, the water with the herbs in. It will then condense on the lid and go down into the glass bowl. And that's what we're collecting. So get your goo pot, ramekin, whatever you're using, and pop it in your pan. Then you're gonna add your ingredients. So I'm gonna put in some apple my hawthorn and then some rose. So I'm just kind of guessing at the amount of ingredients to use. I'm a big fan of just eyeballing things and seeing what comes out. If you're using dried ingredients, you need to use more than if you're using fresh ingredients. So we don't need uh, loads of apple because it's fresh, but we probably need quite a bit of rose so that it has a nice strong flavor. I think that looks good. And then you're gonna add your bowl. So this is what the, uh, let's clear this off. This is what the hydrosol is going to collect in. And then your water. So I want to make about half a liter of hydrosol. So I've got 500 mils of water just in this jug. And I'm going to very carefully from this angle, add water to the pot. There we go. So all the herbs are covered in water. And then we just put the bowl oops, there like this. Then you're gonna take your saucepan lid and you put it in upside down. So you gotta make sure that your bowl ramekin lid arrangement fits so that 
the bowl is underneath the lid. So once you've got your ingredients set up and you're still all ready to go, we need to pop it on the stove and get it up to temperature so that it starts to boil. Once it's boiling, we turn it down so it's just simmering really gently and we're gonna put a bag of ice on the lid. So the ice cools the lid down so that when the steam hits the lid, it condenses. And because the lid is upside down, the water that's now on the lid will drip down into the bowl. That's the theory <laughs> behind a really basic still. So the easiest thing to do is have Ziploc bags ready so that you can put your ice in a Ziploc bag. So I have a couple in the fridge ready to go. You put your first one on, then as it melts, you can take it off, swap it out for another Ziploc bag, fill that bag back up with ice and have that ready to go. So you're just constantly switching it out. The reason it's useful to have a glass lid is that you can see inside so that you can keep an eye on the bowl because it, as it starts to fill up, my bowl isn't big enough to hold all of the water that I'm going to collect, so I'll have to start emptying it out. So you just want to keep an eye on it to make sure that it's all okay. So you just keep replacing bags of ice until all of the water has evaporated and you've got all of your hydrosol out. And then you need to let it cool down, so we'll just let it sit on the counter for a while and then the next bit is putting it in a bottle. So while I was waiting for this one to cool, I did quickly whip up a lavender hydrosol that we're going to use as a room spray. So the process for that is exactly the same. I just put the lavender in the pan, set the bowl and the ramekin up exactly the same way, and then just put ice on the lid until it was ready. It took about an hour and a half to distill, uh, how much is this? To distill about 500 mils of hydrosol and used about two kilos of ice. So we're gonna bottle the, the rose hydrosol first. So I put it in this kind of bottle. I just got this as like part of a home brewing kit. You want to store your hydrosol in dark glass because sunlight will cause it to go bad. So you wanna store it in something like an amber bottle. These swing top bottles have a really good seal. So it'll keep it nice and fresh. These are really easy to come by, just you can buy them online and a funnel super useful so you don't spill because every drop is precious <laughs> i say hoping that i'm not going to just spill it everywhere as i pour it in and you just decant it oh. perfect <laughs> i love it when a plan comes together and seal the bottle and put a label on it because you definitely will not remember what's in it. I'm just gonna quickly go grab the lavender hydrosol because it's in a jug that's not as pretty as this one and I will, I will be right back. <laughs> Here's one I made earlier. Just gave the jug a little rinse. So now we've got a lavender hydrosol in here. Because it's a room spray, I want to just put it straight into, again, amber glass bottles to keep it nice and fresh but to uh, like an atomizer bottle. And again, I just got these online. These are 100 ml bottles. And so I've got a smaller funnel to fit into, oh, just, just fits, to fit into smaller bottles. And we can just pour that in there. There we go. There's one. This is... Ooh. Oh, this one's a bubbler. <laughs> I don't know why it does this. You've got to pour it in in the exact right angle, otherwise it goes everywhere. There we go. And the final one. So hydrosols definitely keep better if you can keep them in the fridge, um, but they should last for sort of six months. Uh, maybe longer if you can keep them, yeah, like in cool, sort of dark conditions. So yeah, definitely try and store them in dark glass if you can. Let's just put all of that in there. Is that going to fit? Ooh, just about. There we go. And then just pop your lids on. There we go. So for just a few handfuls of dried lavender and about an hour and a half of time, you've got some lovely room sprays. So we can give it a try. To be honest, smells really strongly of lavender in this room now anyway. So ooh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell, but we can do a little spritz, shall we? Mmm, 
Actually, it does smell pretty strong <laughs> when you put your face right in it. That's pretty good. Um, also, can be used as a nice little facial spritz. We'll give it a go. Mmm, it's very refreshing. Uh, there we are. So that's your lavender hydrosol. More importantly, <laughs> it's time for a cocktail. I didn't bring a shot glass to measure it, so we're improvising with this excellent egg cup. Um, it looks about a double shot. Uh, so we're gonna do, yeah, generally with the hydrosols, I do like a kind of a double shot to serve. Oh, look at that, it's very professional. This egg cup is adorable. There we go. Then we're gonna do a spoonful of the hibiscus sugar syrup, which has come out, oh, just the most amazing color. So the hibiscus sugar syrup that I made, super, super basic. With any sugar syrup, you use equal amounts of sugar and water. And then I just melted that in a pan and brought it to the boil and then added a few tablespoons of hibiscus and just let that simmer gently for about 10 minutes until it reduces down. So I used half a cup of sugar, just regular caster sugar, and half a cup of water, and it made this jar of sugar syrup. <laughs> so that's it, super simple, and it adds a really nice splash of color and flavor to the cocktail. There we go. One, two. And then top it up with Soda water, uh, hopefully didn't shake that too much on the way here. There we go. And now all it needs is a little garnish. Boop. There we go. It's cocktail time. <laughs> that was super cheesy. <laughs> I don't know how to sit. It's not like this is planned at all. It's not planned. I am casually just, it's been a hard day's work. I'm just casually taking a break. Well, fancy meeting you here. What a surprise. Looks like you could thank do you. with a cocktail. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I also no don't worries. know how to sit. Maybe I could sit with <laughs> legs on you like this. No. Nope. Okay. But Israel, I haven't tried this yet. So oh. I am very much Cheers. Tears. excited. Mm, it's what I found really interesting about because this is the first time I've kind of come across hydrosols mm. and actually tried them and seen the process is there's something about the distilling that kind of that in itself is interesting and, and that in itself becomes part of like the smell and the flavor you can kind of tell that it's whether it's a freshness mm. whether it's a kind of clear no, cleanness that's not the right word but do you know what I mean you know it's like a purity it. to yeah. it and I think when you drink it it gives it kind of like a different sort of mouth feel to if you were just drinking water or if you were just drinking the soda water it's sort of supposed to mimic alcohol it's obviously not going to be the same but I think when you look at it in the jug and when you drink it you can sort of you can tell that it's undergone a process of like purification really and uh yeah, it's it's very delicate. Um, it's got a good it's got a good smell and taste of rose though. Yeah, I like it. And it's a delicate, like I say, yeah. The way I think I'd describe it is like a delicate freshness, mm. perfect for a a day like today. You mm. know, a sort of yes. warm spring day. Something to just kind of perk you up. You want something yeah. fizzy, cold. That's also yeah. It's just. Nice. Yeah, nice it's spring not, morning. It's not super sweet. It's not like drinking a soda. I mm. think that's kind of why I wanted to start experimenting with them because I don't drink alcohol. And uh, <laughs> perfect, timing. perfect timing. Perfect timing. Cheers. We're going to talk about who is his. his. <laughs> perfect timing. Hi. You can actually, you can, uh, you can help us. How do you say the name of where we are? Cletty Mary. Mary. I knew it. I was on it. Cletty Mary and. Um, I'm, don't, I'm not sure everyone can see Josie on the camera, but we're at the <laughs> we point where currently. we're just finishing our drink and we need to give a quick plug to where we are and how oh, kind you've been to let yeah. us film here today. If you're yeah. interested in staying near Kangdailo in Wales, the beautiful setting, mm. and there's three different properties and they are all two bedroom? Yeah, single stories, both two 
think what's just take three people a double and a single and one cottage has bunk beds. So for sort of, you know, marketed at 12 and under. Brilliant. Amazing. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you so much. For having us oh, to, is, oh, is. well, who knows? Yeah, maybe we can bring you, we can bring you one later. Well, I knew that, that worked out perfectly. I knew that was going to happen. Yep. Great. Thank you again. And thank you for the room, the, the room sprays as well. Mm. I was really taken aback by, it's interesting as well. We tried these, obviously the, um, what would you call it? Would it be, called, is it, is the word hydra sold when it's been, um, Distilled. Distilled. <clears throat> yeah, the I distilled, guess. No, it's the distilled. Yeah, the distilled yeah. liquid compared with obviously what's left mm. in the pot. Like that obviously still was quite nice and, and quite fragrant. Whereas the lavender uh, room spray, obviously because it's the type of um, product it is, mm -hmm. you know, lavender is such a strong smell. That yeah. has come out and that's beautiful. Yeah, you know, yeah. Really nice, strong smell that again has that kind of freshness, that cleanliness, that... Mm. that um, you know what the because of the distilling process yeah and it's really nice like because it's not overpowering like what you get often with like essential oil it's really nice to spray on your sheets to spray on your pillow so if you have trouble sleeping uh you know lavender is a really lovely herb for helping relax and soothe if you get headaches things like that spraying it on a cloth and putting it on your head or spraying it on a pillow because it's nice and gentle that would be a really lovely way to use it and yeah, lavender is just like the perfect herb for it. The sort of herbs that you want to use for hydrosols are ones that have a lot of oils in them. So, you know, uh, plants like rosemary, uh, uh, lavender, uh, citrus, pine, you know, anything that's got a lot of like, already got a lot of oil in it with lots and lots of scent. Those are the ones that make really, really good hydrosols. So what's your favorite hydrosol? If your favorite ingredient, sorry. Um, Oh, I don't know. I may, I've made a really good gin and tonic uh, substitute. Uh, well, I guess the gin substitute. So I used a lot of juniper berries. I put rosemary and cucumber as another one that has a lot of really good flavor in. Uh, and that was actually really good. Uh, I was pretty happy with that little experiment. Um, but yeah, I mean, I haven't really been making them for that long. They're just like, as I said, it was an experiment because I was looking for something as a sort of alcohol free alternative to spirits that was kind of like more of a grown up drink than drinking like ginger beer all the time. Um, and then once I started getting into it and researching it, I just fell down a rabbit hole and was like, oh, these are amazing. I can't wait to make more. So I'm really just starting to experiment with them. I'm really enjoying the lavender room spray. That one was really lovely. Um, I'd like to maybe make like a kind of mint or a pine or something like kind of less florally, more sort of um, zingy, I guess, uh, flavor. So maybe give that one a try next. Um, and you yeah. mentioned, so this is the start of, you, you're just kind of experimenting at mm. the moment, isn't it? Is that right? So if, so I was going to say, you know, if someone's interested in buying one of these, <laughs> where can they go um, as a bit of a, as a bit of a plug? Because obviously I've met uh, Ems, if you're interested in watching the uh, Klangdovri Pride video. Mm. So that's kind of around that time was when we first met, mm -hmm, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Basically, a similar interest in regards, especially in regards to foraging, although you run foraging workshops and yep. things like that. And I was like, oh, wow, I need to find people who can, can teach me all this kind of stuff. Um, and then that was around the time that you started the Devil's Nettle. Yeah. So tell me and the audience more about what, what, what who is the Devil's <laughs> Nettle and, and what well, do you do? Well, it's, it's just me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I started it a year ago and it's a herbalism business. So I kind of make all kinds of different herbal products, starting off mainly with herbal tea because I just love herbal tea. I've done some herbal medicine, studying a bit of herbal medicine and I'm really fascinated by plants and their medicinal uses. So I started making tea blends to kind of um, like make the most of the different medicinal properties of plants and yeah just to make tasty teas um also make like bath products and smoking blends and tinctures and yeah just generally a bunch of different homemade folk remedies folk in inverted commas um, and yeah a lot of them have foraged ingredients in so i'd like to incorporate the foraging into the the products that i make and this is just a kind of trial to see if these are the sorts of things that people might be interested in so as I mentioned at the beginning, my friend's wedding, I'm having a little bar and I'm going to be trying out some of these hydrosol drinks for people to, to see if, if people like them. And like the room sprays and things like that are probably products that I'd, I'd like to be able to, to make and sell in the future. Uh, so if people are interested in buying them, they could always just let me know and then I, <laughs> then I can just make more. Um, yeah. So how can people find uh, the Devil's Nettle? 
Oh, on all the usual places. So I've got a website, uh, thedevilsnettle.com and Instagram, Facebook uh, is the devil's nettle with dots in between <laughs> the things. I've got an online shop so you can buy the products that I make online, um, book onto foraging walks and that kind of thing that I run in, um, in Carmarthenshire. Uh, yeah, and just keep up to date with any new product developments and who knows, maybe you will soon be enjoying your own cocktails. <laughs> For today, that's it. Um, yeah. You're hopefully definitely going to come back. I yes, know we're going to do, gonna do uh, more. some photography for the Devil's Nettle and things. I'm not sure if I'll make videos about that as such, <laughs> but I know I'd like to get you back and maybe come over to the land and do a bit yeah, of ID some... and see about forage, forage things that are on the land and what we can forage and find and you know what's already there that's edible and can yeah. be used for very different, various different reasons. But for today, thank yeah, you. No Cheers worries. again. Cheers. And thanks again, everyone. And I'll see you in the next one. Yay. Right. Yay. <laughs> oh, get the raspberry as well. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs>